Hey guys, Robert Maxwell here, and in this video I'm going to give you an extremely detailed guide on how to deadlift. Now, the internet and YouTube are certainly not short on how to deadlift guides, for that matter, on how to do lots of different barbell exercise guides. But although some of those are very good, I personally find some of them fall short in terms of the amount of detail they provide. So in this video, I'm going to provide you with a lot of detail on how to do the conventional deadlift safely and strongly, and by the time you're finished this video, you'll have enough confidence to do this exercise as a regular part of your training, to make strength gains with this exercise, and to know that you're doing it right. So let's get into it. The method I'm going to describe here for setting up and performing the deadlift is based largely on Mark Ripito's starting strength method. So if you want a whole lot of more detailed insight on how to deadlift, and for that matter how to squat, bench press, and power clean, pick up a copy of his book, Starting Strength. I recommend every strength athlete, and especially aspiring strength athletes, and guys who just want to get stronger, read this book. The first thing you need to get right before you even approach the bar to do your first deadlift is footwear. Now, a lot of guys skip over this step. They want to start training with weights and they just throw on their running shoes and go nuts in the gym. Problem with that is that regular running shoes, in fact most shoes, period, are just not ideal for barbell training. What you should have is a hard, flat-soled type of footwear. I like to use Converse All-Star for deadlifting and for squatting and the rest of my training for that matter. These are uh, easy to find shoe that are perfect in terms of their flatness, their fairly low sole profile, and the fact that the sole is hard. There's no air pockets or squishiness in there like you have in Nike running shoes, for instance. You definitely don't want the squishy cross trainer type of shoes for deadlifting. You'd be far better off to go barefoot than to wear shoes like that. The reason that squishy soled regular running shoes are a bad idea for deadlifting is twofold. First of all, force transference. When the sole of your shoe is squishy and absorbent, designed to give you a little bit of an extra spring when you're running, for instance, it's not going to transfer the force you apply with your legs and back to push slash pull the barbell off the floor as you do when you deadlift. It's going to absorb some of the force you generate with your body, and not all of that force will make it into the floor, lowering the efficiency of your lift and increasing the amount of effort you have to exert to get a given weight off the ground. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, regular squishy running shoes are a bad idea, is stability. The fact that they squish and move around under load is bad for your joints when you have a lot of weight in your hand. You want something that solidly connects you to the floor, that's not going to move as you push down on it with the soles of your feet and with the rest of your body. The next point to consider before you even start deadlifting is the plates and the bar that you'll be using. Now, if you're going to a commercial gym to train, chances are they'll have what you need. What you should be using is an Olympic barbell, seven feet long, roughly 1.1 inches in diameter in the spot where you grip, with two inch collars for the weights to slide on. The plates themselves, if you want to go with regulation plates, and you should, should be 17.7 inches in diameter and obviously need to have a hole in the center large enough to fit onto that Olympic barbell. The combination of a proper Olympic barbell and regulation 17.7 diameter weight plates is going to place your bar just under 9 inches, about 8.5 inches off of the floor, which is the ideal height to begin a deadlift movement from. Now, if you're training at home, you may have a cheaper, smaller set of weights. Maybe you have one of those small diameter bars and weight plates that aren't a full 17.7 inches in diameter. If that's what you've got, you might want to, first of all, consider investing in something better, especially if you're going to be serious about barbell training and about strength gains in the future. If you can't afford to get a better set, then you need to find some foam pads or wooden blocks or something you can put under the weight plates to raise up your barbell to a height of eight and a half inches off the floor if your barbell is lower than that when it's just resting on the floor without anything. Do a full warm-up, something that completely warms up every muscle group you'll be using to perform the deadlift, which, to be honest, is most muscle groups in your body. 
You're going to be using your upper back, your lower back, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and even your shoulders and, of course, your hands to a degree. So make sure all of those are warmed up. I'm going to be doing another video, a detailed step-by-step -step on the warm-up I use for deadlifts and for squats and other barbell movements. So check that out when it comes out. But for now, I'll just assume that you've warmed up properly and we'll get into the movement. The first step is to take your stance. You need to approach the middle of the barbell, place your feet roughly shoulder width apart or slightly closer together than that, with your toes almost straight ahead, but just slightly turned out. You should be standing at a point where your ankles are roughly one inch or slightly more away from the barbell. Next, you need to take your grip. Bend over at the waist without bending your knees yet. That's very important. And take a grip on the barbell, either with double overhand or hook grip, or you could do over under grip if that's more comfortable for you. But either way, you want your body to remain square and straight onto the barbell. And you need to place your hands on the barbell, no matter what type of grip you choose, at a point where they're just outside your legs. Once you've bent over at the waist and taken your grip, you need to take a great big belly breath before you begin bending your knees and prepare to pull. Make this breath as big as you can. Force that air down into your stomach and diaphragm area. Fill it as full as you can. The more air you can get into your abdominal cavity, the stronger your brace will be and the more weight you'll be able to lift. Once you've maximized your air intake, squeeze down as hard as you possibly can on your abdominal muscles, your obliques, and your low back muscles. You basically want to turn your whole trunk into one solid, immovable bar of iron. I can't stress enough that you really need to squeeze down and brace as hard as you can, pin your rib cage down, squeeze everything in like your life depended on it, like you're about to get punched really hard in the gut, as Mark Ripito says. This is by no means going to be comfortable. Bracing like this is going to feel awkward and unnatural. It's going to make you feel like you want to burst. But if you feel like that, chances are you're doing it right. Bracing properly should not, under any circumstances, be a comfortable thing to do. You're going to be holding this brace for the entirety of your deadlift rep. Now, once you've established your brace and you're squeezing for all your worth, while maintaining your grip on the barbell and the stance described earlier, you're going to begin to bend at your knees. You're going to continue bending your knees, lowering your hips, until your shins come in contact with the bar. Then you're not going to go any lower. The point at which your shins touch the barbell is the point at which you're going to begin to initiate the pull to break the bar off the ground. At this point, you want to take the slack out of the bar by gradually applying tension to it. Make sure your upper back is engaged by raising your chest, presenting your chest upwards, and tucking your lats back as if you're trying to put them into your back pockets. Then you're going to begin applying tension to the bar to break it off the floor. The way you're going to do this is twofold. You're going to pull up with your back and you're going to push as hard as you can into the floor with your legs. World record deadlift holder Eddie Hall once said that the deadlift is like a leg press. And when I first heard that, it revolutionized the way that I performed this movement and allowed me to move much more weight once I internalized it. So you really want to make sure that you're not only pulling. People use the term pull to describe deadlift, but it's just as much about pushing with your legs as it is about pulling, and maybe even more. You want to push through the floor. Imagine crushing your feet through the floor to break the bar off the ground while simultaneously pulling up on it slowly, steadily, and strongly with your upper back. Do not try to jerk it off the floor in some sort of a violent jerking motion. That's going to injure you. You want to apply a steady, even tension to the bar while pushing and pulling, and in doing so, the bar will begin to break off the floor. The goal at this stage, and what you should be inspecting for as you view footage of your pulling from the side, is an absolutely straight and neutral back. That's what you need to maintain with your bracing and your breathing. Your back should be straight and perfectly flat all the way from your shoulders down to your hips throughout the pull. Under no circumstances should you allow the weight to pull you out of that position and cause your back, particularly your lower back, to round. Now, some advanced conventional deadlifters are able to allow their upper back to round, 
which effectively reduces the range of motion and allows them to lift more weight. I feel this is legitimate for those advanced lifters, but for the purposes of this video, since it's geared towards beginning lifters, I recommend going for a straight back from top to bottom throughout the movement and not trying to replicate any advanced techniques just yet. Continue this simultaneous pushing with your legs and pulling with your back until you reach the top of the movement and are standing straight up. During the last quarter of the movement or so, as you've almost stood up, you want to drive your hips violently into the bar. Don't overextend your low back to do this. You want to end up standing in a straight neutral position, not with your hips crazy forward like you see some guys doing. That could hurt your lower back. But you do want to use your hips to apply some extra force to finish that movement strongly and lock out decisively. All this takes a while to describe, but I should mention that so far you should still be holding that breath that you took earlier, that great big belly breath, and you should still be bracing as hard as you possibly can everywhere. When you've successfully locked the bar out, stood fully straight up with your shoulders back and your hips firmly in contact with the barbell, then it's time to lower the bar back to the ground. Now, a lot of guys get lazy at this point and relax their brace, sometimes letting their breath out. That's not something you should do. It's not only dangerous and lazy, but it looks bad too. And if you want to look like a professional while doing the deadlift, you have to lift like a professional, and that includes lowering the bar like a professional. So the lowering portion of the movement should look like an exact reverse version of what you just did to lift the barbell. Carefully lower it, hinging at the hips while simultaneously bending at the knees, maintaining your brace and still holding that breath until the bar contacts the floor. Then and only then can you release your brace and take another breath and reset for your next rep. This is a good point to mention a common mistake I see with a lot of guys who come to me for help with their deadlifts. They get the bar up successfully and their form is pretty decent, but during the lowering portion they end up having to move the bar around their knees, out and around their knees to get it to the floor. Now the reason this is happening is because these guys are bending their knees to lower the bar from lockout, but they're not hinging at the hips enough at the same time. Now the reason that's bad is because an efficient lowering of the bar will always be in a straight vertical line, just like an efficient raising of the bar. The bar should travel straight up from that point over the middle of your foot, one inch from your shin as you set up, straight up to lock out where it contacts your hip. There should be no deviation, no front to back movement as viewed from the side. You should simply raise the bar, lock it out, and then lower it in exactly the same way. If you're having to move the bar out around your knees to avoid hitting them, either when raising the bar or lowering it, something's wrong. And the thing that's wrong is that you're not hinging at the hips enough. After successfully performing your first rep, you simply need to reset and begin the entire process again. Again, raising your hips up so that your knees are not bent, still maintaining your grip on the bar and maintaining your stance position. Your feet should not move for the duration of a deadlift set, nor should your hands. Now, a lot of how to deadlift guides already available on the internet cover most if not all of the points I've discussed so far. The trouble is, if you're a novice lifter, you probably don't yet have a very well-developed kinesthetic sense, meaning you're not necessarily aware of when your body is doing the right thing, even if you understand it intellectually watching a video like this one. You can't see your low back and your hips and your quads when you're not looking at them, when you're in the middle of a deadlift, so you don't necessarily know if you're doing everything, crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's, as described here. That's where you need to pick up your smartphone and use it. Film yourself doing this movement. A good angle is directly from the side, or slightly back from direct side view. Make sure you can see everything, your feet in contact with the floor, the entire barbell, and especially your back. And then you need to evaluate by watching yourself. Compare your movements to what you've seen here and do an honest, detailed critique of where what you're doing differs. One excellent way to make sure that your position is good as viewed from the side when deadlifting is that from a side view, 
your shoulder joint, your hand in contact with the barbell, and the midpoint of your foot should all be in exact vertical alignment with each other. If your shoulder joint is ahead or behind the barbell and your midfoot, that's a problem. Your lift's efficiency will then suffer and you're at a higher risk of injury. As far as what weights you should use when you're doing the deadlift for the first time, you should start off with the empty bar to warm up and then gradually increase the weight from there. You can get bumper plates of any weight that are the same diameter as a regulation 45 plate, 17.7 inches. So no matter how weak you are, you should be able to start from the correct height. The main thing is to settle on a weight where you can absolutely do all your reps with correct form. If you find that your brace is beginning to fail you, even if you're genuinely doing every step described in this video, your low back is still beginning to curve, for instance, or the bar is pulling your upper back a little bit out of position, that's a sign that you need to lower the weight. You should definitely not be doing anything that challenges or compromises your technique at this point in your training, or probably ever. One question I get quite a lot from guys who are starting to deadlift for the first time is where belts come into things. You often see great big strong power lifters and bodybuilders belting up before a heavy set of deadlift. And these guys want to know, should I get a belt? Well, that's really up to you. You certainly don't need a belt to begin deadlifting, and arguably it's better to start off without one so you learn the technique. What a belt actually does is simply gives you something solid to brace your core against. A lot of people think it does part of the work for you or makes it way easier to lift heavy weights because you don't have to worry so much about your bracing that the rigidity of the belt somehow braces for you. All that is nonsense. All a belt does is give you something to push against and as anyone can tell you, you can push harder against a solid object than you can just push into thin air. So because wearing a belt provides a solid surface to brace against, you can often lift more weight with one if you know how to use it correctly. So if you're serious about deadlifting and you'd like to progress as far as you can and eventually reach your strength potential in this movement, consider getting a proper powerlifting belt. But as I said, you certainly don't need one to get started and it would be a good idea to learn the movement and internalize it fully without a belt before putting one on. Sometimes you see guys doing what's known as touch and go deadlift, where instead of fully placing the weight down on the ground after each rep, resetting and pulling again, they simply bounce the weight off the floor and immediately begin pulling again into their next rep. I don't recommend this, especially not for beginners. I used to do it myself before I knew any better, but I definitely suggest you do a full reset, a full stop, let the barbell stop moving, take out all momentum from the equation before beginning your next rep. It's called a deadlift for a reason. You're supposed to pull the bar from a dead stop, not from a bouncy momentum. And you'll get stronger if you pull from a dead stop too. So there you have it my guide on how to do a conventional deadlift safely and optimally. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you have, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any other topics or movements you'd like me to do a tutorial on of this sort on the channel, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get to it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.